Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be sharing my April book haul. I'm going to be splitting it into two videos though because I have amassed quite a large number of books this month. So this is part one of two. The reasons for me getting so many books this month are one, it was my birthday at the end of March so I went to a couple of secondhand bookshops and treated myself to a few things. And two, there have been a ton of library book sales in my area recently and of course I've been to them all. So far I've been to four and I think there are a couple more coming up at the end of April that I haven't been to yet. So yeah, it's been a crazy month but I've been hitting these book sales hard and they have turned up some real gems. Most of the books I got are horror. I did get a couple of other books from other genres, uh, plus a couple of true crime books and some non-fiction. And first up I'll start off with this stack of horror paperbacks that I got from Half Price Books. So we have The Keepsake by Paul Houston and I could not resist this cover, I think it's amazing. The uh, this like face in the middle that's all embossed and then the dripping blood title. I mean it's got it all going on. And this is about someone who takes a stone away from somewhere in Ireland as a souvenir and terrible things happen because of that. So yeah, sounds good. Next is Carlisle Street by T.M. Wright. Again another fantastic cover that I needed in my life. And Whitley Strieber says Carlisle Street contains some of the scariest moments I have experienced in modern horror fiction, so I'd like to check that out. Next is Dead and Buried, which I believe is the novelisation of the film. This is by Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough, and it's about a place called Potter's Bluff, where people seem to be coming back from the dead. It's been a long time since I've seen the film, so my memory is hazy, but I thought I'd give this one a go. Next is The Torching by Marcy Hydish, and I think this is something to do with witches back in the 18th century, and maybe someone in the present day being connected to that. It might be more historical fiction or mystery, but I think it might have some horror or supernatural elements too. And I'm always looking for more horror written by women, so I figured I'd give this one a go. Next is Save the Last Dance for Me by Judy Miller, with this rather wonderful cover and step back art. Yeah, it's a good one. And I think this one was featured in Paperbacks from Hell. And yeah, who really cares what this one is about, quite honestly. Um, but I think this one is maybe more of a like soap opera-y type mystery or thriller than full-on horror, but hey, I needed it. And last from that little batch is Black Magic by Whitley Strieber, who I just happened to mention earlier. And the back says, no one can hide from him, no one can escape his evil, no man, no woman can resist his black magic. So that stack cost me, I think it was just over $10, which I thought was a really good price. And next up I got these three from another second-hand bookshop and this also cost me about $10. So these were slightly more but still very bargainous. First up I got The Godsend by Bernard Taylor. I have already read this and really enjoyed it and I have the reissue uh, that came out in recent years from Valancourt Books. But when I saw this I thought why not grab it too because yeah Bernard Taylor is becoming a new favourite of mine so I wanted to add this one to my collection. Also I got Mary Mary by B.W. Batten. This one just looked intriguing, it has kind of a unique cover and all of this gold which you don't see too often and yeah don't know too much about it but it looked interesting. And last from that batch is Crawl Space by Herbert Lieberman. I think this is about someone who, um, a repairman, who goes into someone's home and then I think maybe stays there and yeah that just sounds really unsettling. So I'm looking forward to reading this one for sure. So now on to some of the books I got from library book sales. We went to four so far this month 
and some of them were individually priced so books tend to be somewhere between 25 cents and a dollar each and a couple of them we went to on the last day which is usually when they have like a bag sale so you can fill up a bag with books for just like five dollars or something so either way they were all bargains I think if my calculations are correct we spent, this is my husband and I, we spent $22. Um, I got a mass of books, he also got a few, so yeah, anyway. Super bargains, and they've all just got kind of merged into one, so I don't necessarily remember which one came from which sale, or if it really matters, but <laughs> let's give it a go. Um, first up, I have The Terror by Dan Simmons, which is a ginormous chunker but I've heard really good things about this one I have yet to read any Dan Simmons even though I have managed to kind of grab a few of his books um, over recent years and add them to my shelves but yeah this one is intimidating for sure but I've heard a lot of good things about it another <laughs> even bigger brick is The Dark Descent which is this really big anthology um, edited by David G Hartwell and we've got authors such as Clive Barker, Shirley Jackson and Stephen King in here. So yeah, I just thought this one would be a great collection to work through one of these days. Then I was really excited to stumble upon this copy of Hollywood Babylon by Kenneth Anger. This is one that I've heard about over the years, but I've never read it. So I was, yeah, stoked to find this copy. Um, this is, as the cover says, the legendary underground classic of Hollywood's darkest and best kept secrets. So yeah, um, it's full of pictures and gossip, basically. Um, yeah, really pleased to find this one. I got this cool little guy, Horror Movies by Daniel Cohen. It's just a slim volume, but we've got Bela Lugosi on the back. And yeah, inside it's just kind of a, whoa, unwieldy. Um, yeah, just a little run through of horror films. I haven't had a chance to really flick through this one yet, but I mean, I couldn't resist it, clearly, so yeah, this was an interesting find. Another one that was one of my favourite finds is Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon. This is a novel from the 70s and it's been on my to-read list for ages because it sounds like just my cup of tea. Um, so yeah, I was really happy to find this copy. And um, moving on to some paperbacks. I was just going through a stack of hardbacks, um, but I also got The Other by the same author, um, which is an other one that I really wanted to read. So yeah, um, these two I did actually find at the same book sale, but at like completely different ends of the ginormous room that uh, was housing the book sale. So yeah, uh, this was a really happy find for me. I also got two uh, Ira Levin hardbacks. Um, these were from different sales. Um, this is Sliver and this is The Stepford Wives. So far I have only read Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin and I've been wanting to read more of his work so was really pleased to find these two. And I got Mindhunter uh, Inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit by John Douglas and Mark Olshaker. This is well, it kind of tells you on the front, um, if you haven't heard of it before, but it is what the Netflix TV series Mindhunter was based on, filmed here in Pittsburgh, represent, and yeah, I really enjoyed the show and that got me intrigued to read the book, so I was happy to stumble upon this one. What I didn't realise until I read on the back is that uh, John Douglas uh, was also the inspiration for the character Jack Crawford in The Science of the Lambs, so I thought that was interesting. Okay, a couple more hardbacks. I got Don't Look Now and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. I think this is the same collection of stories that I actually recently listened to the audio version of a couple of months ago. Um, Don't Look Now was definitely the standout story for me, but I did enjoy, I think, all but one of the others, so yeah, was quite pleased to find this one. And I got The Ruins by Scott Smith, which I have read and thoroughly enjoyed. It's a really excellent book, uh, but I have the 
paperback edition with the movie tie-in cover and it's just awful quite frankly so I was very happy to stumble upon this one so I will probably replace the paperback with this one. I do actually prefer paperbacks but this is a better cover. That's really shallow but there you go. Okay back to some more paperbacks. I got The Boogans by... who is it by? Charles E. Salier Jr. and Robert Werverka and this I believe is a novelization of the film. I haven't seen the film but I have seen the artwork before and the name so when I saw this one I like grabbed it and shoved a couple of people out of the way. It was totally worth it. I mean what a great cover though. It's just wonderful. I also got Mazes and Monsters by Rona Jaff or Jaffe and now I can't not think about King Jaffe Joffa from Coming to America. I hope my sister's watching this because I know she will be <laughs> rolling on the floor laughing about that. Anyway, this was also mentioned in Paperbacks from Hell and it came out I think around the time of the Dungeons and Dragons Satanic Panic kind of era and I think this one from what I can remember Grady Hendrix saying is was kind of just a bit of a horrible cash-in on a tragedy. So yeah, don't know much more about it, but I was still pleased to find it and add it to my collection. I got an anthology called The Twelve Frights of Christmas. This is a baker's dozen of yuletide horror tales from Arthur C. Clarke, H.P. Lovecraft, Robert Block, Ramsey Campbell and others. Um, yeah. What a wonderful Christmassy horror-y image. I also got If You Could See Me Now by Peter Straub. I've only read Ghost Story by him and honestly it was a mixed experience for me. It's very highly regarded and there were parts of it that I really loved but other parts of it that I felt were very dry and slow so yeah, I'm intrigued to read more by him uh, and see what I think and this is one that I don't really know much about. Whew, this is a lot of books. I also got Speaks the Nightbird by Robert McCammon and uh, this is another author like Dan Simmons that I hear a lot of great things about and I've kind of collected a few of each of their novels but haven't read any yet so yeah, I'll get to it one of these days because like I say I hear great things. I got another Daphne du Maurier, this is The House on the Strand with these wonderful red edges and this I don't know much about other than it has something to do with time travel so yeah I'm in. I got another B.W. Batten book, uh, same author as Mary Mary that I showed earlier and I don't know if you can tell but like all of these uh, bits, slats and stuff are like all embossed and it's just kind of a really amazing cover in a really weird way. Um, like you just don't get that anymore. They don't put that kind of effort into such a cover. Anyway, this is The Attraction. Uh, one man's obsession is one woman's terror. I was pretty stoked to find a Christopher Pike book and he's well known for his YA horror but this I believe is one of his adult novels. This is The Cold One and yeah definitely a bit thicker than his YA stuff and one that I haven't read so yeah I was really happy to find this one. I think I've said that a million times now. Okay I got Wolf File by Jack Woods. Um, got some embossing here on the wolf face and um, yeah I'm guessing it's a werewolf story. <laughs> I think I'm getting a bit delirious but this is um, from a publisher called Pageant Books which I'm not familiar with I'll be honest so yeah that was an intriguing find. Then I saw The Spine for Bring on the Night by Jay Davis and Don Davis um, but it's missing the cover. Um, we only have the step back art which is weird because I've come across a lot of books that has the step back art missing but it still has the cover but I've never seen the other way around so yeah don't actually have the cover but the rest of the book is actually in really good nick so it's a definite reading copy um, and yeah I was pleased to find it anyway. Then I got Edge of Terror by Michael Hammonds and 
This might be more of a thriller than horror, but I figured I'd grab it anyway. And when I added it into Goodreads, I think it has like one rating. So, wow, intriguing. I got The Forgotten by Stephen R. George. And I think this one is about some kind of underground creature. Probably this guy. I'm definitely losing the plot here. Next is The Devil's Auction by Robert Weinberg. We've got a million different fonts going on here. We've got a whole bunch of embossing um, and something about the devil. So, yep, count me in. And speaking of the devil, I got The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. I've never read this, um, but I figured now's my chance. And another great cover. Okay, so I realised I've gone over halfway, so I figured I'll call it a night here and yeah, come back before too long with part two, show you the rest of what I've already accumulated, plus there might be some new additions from the library book sales that are happening this weekend. Yeah, it's been a wild month for sure on the whole book buying front, but um, yeah, considering the ones I got from the book sales have been crazily cheap, I just couldn't resist. And otherwise it's honestly been kind of a crappy month, so this has been one of my highlights. But I hope you have all been having a really good April so far. Let me know if you've read any of these books, uh, tell me what you thought. And yeah, I think I'm going to take a cold shower and maybe lie down in a dark room for a while. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I will see you again in my next video.